Consensus in terms of computing is similar to consensus in terms of humans. If you're a group of friends who's organizing to go to coffee and you're trying to pick a time in which to go, you may have some friends that don't reply, some messages might get lost, you might ask a friend to ask another friend, they might forget about it, one friend might be off having a nap and doesn't reply to your message. Despite all of that, you still manage to, to reach agreement, you seem still manage to reach consensus between you. When we're talking about consensus, we're normally talking often inside a data centre, using the coffee analogy. So if you've got a group of three friends, Alice, Bob and Charlie. Alice wants to go for coffee. She'll message Bob and Charlie and say, hey guys, do you want to go for coffee at two? And if these are nice, reliable friends, they'll message back and say, yep, great, let's do two o'clock. And then Alice will message both Bob and Charlie to confirm that that time is okay and that agreement has been reached. In practice, however, anyone who's tried to organise anything will know that things aren't that straightforward. Alice may message Bob and Charlie, they may respond, and then Alice may confirm with Bob, but she may get distracted, maybe she has a nap, maybe she's busy in a meeting, she may never confirm with Charlie. Charlie now doesn't know what's going on. Charlie could try to maybe try to contact Bob and find out what's going on. So you may have other parties that are trying to organise things during the day. We've got D for Danny here, and Danny may be saying, hey, can you come to a meeting at two? But Charlie doesn't know because Charlie's basically blocked until he finds out for sure what's going on with Alice. And the same is true for computer systems. If you've got a bank, Alice has £100 and Bob has £50, you have this database and you replicate it across three different machines. Then you have some clients, so these might be an ATM, might be a website for online banking, you might have an online bookstore, and then you might have a shop in a restaurant. And these clients will put in requests and say things like, how much money does Alice have? So this machine could respond and say, Alice has a hundred pounds. But during this time, another guy could say, Alice wants to spend 50 pounds. We could change it, the value here and reduce it to 50 and respond but it would then be inconsistent with the value here. So these three machines need to communicate in the same way that Alice, Bob and Charlie did to reach agreement about how much money Alice has in her bank account. So we can look at Alice requesting to take out £50 out of an ATM in the same way that we uh, did this coffee example between Alice, Bob and Charlie. So the machine contacts the other the machines and says, how much money does Alice have? These guys respond. Let's assume that's back at 100 again. And once this machine has got the responses, you can say, okay, thank you. And return the result back. Importantly, these machines say, yes, that would be okay, but they don't actually take the money out of the account at that point. In the same way that when someone says, um, can you do coffee at two? You don't immediately put it in your calendar. You wait for them to confirm before you do that. So then this machine, once it sees that the other machines are all happy to put this request through, will respond and say, okay, put that through. All of the machines will reduce the money down to 50 and respond to the cash machine to say that Alice has enough credit to get the money out of the machine. This protocol is called two-phase commit and um, it's a good starting point for a lot of consensus algorithms. It requires each node to ask another node and come back. So the time it takes to speak to a node and come back is known as the round trip time or RTT. Because it's a two phase commit, there's two phases of it. It takes two RTTs to reach consensus in this situation. There are however problems with it because failures can still occur. For example, the node that was doing the coordination here might fail and it might not be clear whether these other guys should take the 50 pounds out or not. That's the worst scenario where Alice asks the cash machine for 50 quid, the cash machine says service is down, you can't have your 50 quid, but the 50 quid goes out of her bank account anyway. Uh, what we can do instead is use three phase commit. So this adds an extra step to the two phase commit. So here the client comes and says, can we deduct 50 from Alice's bank account? The server asks the other two as before. They respond to say Alice has sufficient balance to do so. Now we add an extra phase. This is called the prepare phase. 
So this is where one server tells the others, okay, we're ready to do this, but don't do it just yet. These guys say, okay, we'll wait to hear some more for you. And then once uh, the server hears from everybody, it responds and tells everybody, hey guys, you can now decrement Alice's money to 50. This extra stage is important because if the server who was doing the coordination was to fail, these guys know that consensus was already reached. So they just have a timer, and if they don't hear from the server who was coordinating the transaction at the time, they can then apply the transaction knowing that it was safe, that it safely went through. This does have problems, however. For example, um, before we talked about how two-phase commit was two times the RTT. Well, this protocol now has three phases, so it now takes three times the RTT to reach consensus. And there's some more problems too. Here, we're assuming that the network is reliable and that all these messages get through, but in practice, this network might not be reliable. There might be different kinds of partitions and the nodes could actually fail. One of the ways that we deal with this is we work with what's called majorities and minorities. So if you have five nodes, you do not need to involve every node in every transaction. The whole reason why we need multiple machines in the first place is because you've got tons of traffic being thrown at these distributed systems like a web server. If there wasn't much traffic, we could just have one machine and this wouldn't be so much of a problem. Because you're going to want to have all this traffic, you don't want every single machine to be involved in every single request because you've not made your situation actually any better. So what we do instead is say that a majority of nodes must agree before you go ahead with a request. If you always work with a majority, you get an interesting thing, which is called the majority intersection property. Majority intersection property means that if you pick any two majorities, there will always be an overlap of at least one node. So we have five nodes here. If you pick three of them, which is a majority, you can't make a set of three again without including at least one node from the previous set. So this means if a group of three of these nodes decided that Alice took 50 pounds out and then you try to take another 70 pounds out of the bank account, at least one of the nodes that would be involved in the process must have seen that Alice has already taken out 50. This is really useful because it reduces the load on the servers. It means you now need almost half as many servers when you're processing any one transaction. It also means that if any minority of servers were to fail, you can carry on as you were before. And it also means if you have a partition which isolates a few of the nodes, you can carry on as you were before, even though you have this partition interfering with things. So a lot of the protocols that we use nowadays are based on a protocol called Paxos. Paxos was invented by uh, a famous computer scientist called Leslie Lamport, who won the Turing Award last year.